Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Shireen Kapoor and today I'm joining you from our Dubai office. Uh, today's topic as you might have seen before clicking the video is a very sensitive topic towards uh, uh, especially in the Gulf market that I have dealt with and people uh, it's no doubt that people from Africa face certain kind of issues when it comes to global mobility. Today I have with me Chinwe. I, uh, Chinwe is one of the experts in citizenship by investment as well as company formation in UAE as well as she works with us for the Canadian company cases Canadian clients so today I'm gonna discuss with her and it's gonna be a very uh, discussion based podcast what I would say uh, in which we will run about some random discussion discussing about the problems that African face with related to migrating uh, Canada and what all other alternative options they have like CBI programs golden visas in UAE which is again a very lucrative uh, you know platform which people are now exploring not just uh, uh, Africans but I think people from across the globe are now looking at UAE as a very uh, stable market in terms of business in terms of security in terms of uh, the returns so uh, welcome Chinwe thank you very much thank you for having today? me I am ha doing very well thank you so Chinwe, I uh, do understand and Chinwe has uh, her, uh, I know you're from the UK as well as you have an African uh, background so I would like to discuss with you today let's start let the starting point for today be that what problem actually Africans face now as a as a South Asian person who's <clears throat> maybe lived in Canada maybe now I'm in the UAE so I can I do see and I'm very open to the con uh, concept that people do need global flexibility in today's global world they do need mobility and which is one of the main hindering hindrance uh, you know which I think Africans especially West Africans mm -hmm. are facing because of certain bans and everything so if you could highlight some of the issues and then we'll take it from there right so the thing here with a lot of Africans in terms of movement from country to country is that a lot of them especially West Africans are restricted in their movement currently uh, they're having a lot of bans from several countries, especially coming from the Middle East and some of the European countries too are placing bans on West Africans. So that uh, freedom of movement is not there. They're not even able to travel freely from one country to another. Talk more of even packing their bags, taking their families with them and relocating. So that's one major problem that I think on today's uh, discussion we'll be able to provide some solutions to. Another main problem is they don't even know where to go to to seek these solutions. They don't even know uh, which professionals or who is even the professional that they should be going to because there's a lot of uh, agents in the market mm -hmm. who are providing them with different type of solutions that are not even maybe real solutions. So there's a lot of misinformation there too as well. They don't know where to go to. That's the second thing. They really don't know who to go to to find solutions to these problems. And um, there's a lot of scam too in mm. Africa. So you would have heard maybe things like 419, scamming, um, fraud, all of these things to play a big part. They are also looking for, let's say, better opportunities from Africa to maybe the West, they're looking for better work opportunities, uh, better family life, they're looking for better education for their children, uh, they're looking also for, you know, in terms of work prospects for them and their children, you know, in the future. So they're just looking for a better future and they're looking for solutions to these issues that they're facing because they do not have it from, you know, where they come from in their own country. So I think on today's uh, discussion, if we can provide some of the solutions that we have for them, I think they would really appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, that's what the whole purpose is about. The purpose of this today's podcast, especially to, you know, target their specific issues. And believe me, as a person, as a, uh, you know, family uh, with my own family, I would have the same feelings that, you know, mostly African clients that I am dealing with from Gulf, they have the issue of security is the main issue. They do want a sense of security. And in terms when they look at Canada, it does give sense of security. Of course, it's a very warm and very welcoming country and uh, there are so many uh, you know there are so many 
uh, there are so many aspects they are doing well here everything is good here but the sense of security overpowers all other factor yeah you're right in saying that the immigration agents and all those people you know portraying themselves as agents in the market and everything they are not really authentic i would i would not say blanketly the same thing but i would still be very i will not hesitate to say that yes there, there is a problem there yes. there are people who are being frauded and defrauded every day and especially when it comes to africans because the access of africans mobility to that particular part of the world is kind of difficult and the uh, people in between they miss uh, misuse and abuse this so i have seen it personally very much and i feel bad because as a lawyer also in terms of my as my sense of responsibility mm -hmm. says that i feel really sad when people are being defrauded and they are being with hefty amounts like the amounts exactly. are also not less and exactly. then you know how difficult moving money from africa to other parts of the world is exactly. beyond all of that it's a very it's a very sad state of affairs but the ray of light is always there mm -hmm. with that we can start to discuss what do you think how how do africans think about canada so i think one thing about canada that uh, peaks in the interest of a lot of africans is the fact that number one is an english speaking nation so when you think about west africa you know countries like nigeria countries like ghana which are English speaking countries. They do not want to move to another country where they have to start from scratch to learn a new language. Yeah. So that's one of the most attractive things about Canada. And I mean, apart from the fact that Canada is Canada with all the opportunities that abound in Canada in terms of work and you know the education system, the healthcare system, these are all attractive things about Canada to you know a lot of West Africans, a lot of Africans in general. Um, and another thing to note is that these people actually have the resources, they have the language ability, which is, they are very proficient in English, um, they have the qualifications thereof, they have the work experience. So with all of this, and I think that's what Canada is looking for, people who have not only the resources, yeah. the language proficiency, skills, skills the experience, yeah you know, and all of this all yeah. together. Cumulative. Exactly. Canada is all about holistic. And in 2023, they are going to have in-demand pool, pool system also. So again, those are, again, high-profile people are going to be picked up. Even, you know, the people who are in demand, the skills which are in demand in Canada. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is one thing we are looking at. Exactly. So these are all the things that makes, you know, Canada attractive to them and also because they have what Canada is looking for. So it's like a perfect match. Yes. So it's just about being in the middle, that's for us as a legal firm, coming in the middle and making sure that they actually have that um, transition. They have very smooth transition from the country mm. to Canada. There is no other way other than, you know, us coming in and letting them know that these opportunities exist for them in Canada and that there is a way to by which they can access those opportunities without being swindled by you know all sorts of individuals mm -hmm. and going in a professional way where their case file is being handled professionally as well so i think just bridging yeah. that gap yeah there's a very thin line difference between you know uh, actually from making promises mm -hmm. and doing the work yes. and so many people are able to commit good promises and fancy promises but not being able or to deliver able. the work yeah with my uh, experience also with uh, african clients is that trust issue is always there and initially it was very difficult for me because it's a new market for me i'm a south asian girl and it's a it's a different uh, you know diaspora for me wherein i had to deal with and initially i felt this hitch I would yes. call it a hitch yes. by Africans wherein, you know, they had this uh, slight trust issue. They used to check my license and all the, and I'm like, why are they doing that? But then again, after listening to the stories, I do realize that, okay, this was the need for them. And if my certificates and uh, our firm's certificates and this thing can help them build that trust, then why not? You know, it's not a problem. I have so many uh, African colleagues with me in Canada also. And uh, when I speak to them, I do realize that, okay, it's because where they are coming from yes. it's also because the political instability that they have seen in their home countries exactly. one thing more about africa i have noticed is that there is a very it's same in india believe me there is a very big disparity between the rich and the poor it's economics it's simple economics but it does affect global migration decisions yes. and 
not to you know not to say that it's something that we want to touch upon today but it's it's a very uh, i would say it's a very personal observation that i have made in which i feel that the rich in africa are getting richer yes. and the poor is getting poorer and this also creates a sense of Uh, agony. Yes. It's a sense of agony for so exactly. many people who are there, and then when people approach, they they actually come up with these issues that okay, I had put in this so much hard work, so much money, but the returns for me are not the same. So that disparity I feel is uh, also a factor for Africans to move out. Exactly, and I think a lot of the people there, which are the masses, they're actually finding it very difficult. to move out of the country because let's say maybe they might be lacking resources they might not have enough funds sufficient funds like let's say the next person who is very wealthy and he's able to access all of these opportunities to travel abroad to even relocate himself and his family yeah. abroad so the average person the masses there they actually finding it difficult mm-hmm. to obtain the resources enough funds with which to be able to let's say migrate to Canada for instance So what typically happens is at least for our own firm I do know that we have several solutions in place for such individuals as well mm-hmm. who are having you know who are ticking the other boxes mm-hmm. so they have this very good qualification they have the great work experience their language proficiency is you know A+ mm-hmm. so the only thing missing would be just having the sufficient funds but they might have something yeah yeah they of might course. have something to be able to start the process with yeah But for those people what typically happens is they're also looking for a firm that will be able to support them in terms of having a good plan payment plan in place yeah. which we do have yeah. so if we're able to support them with that payment plan then I think that would be um I think that would be a perfect solution to that particular issue yeah. of you know let's say insufficient funds um lack of uh, sufficient resources yeah. to be able to migrate and mainly lack of knowledge i think yeah. awareness and knowledge is one thing which uh, is definitely lacking in that part of the world but exactly. moving on let's uh, let's now uh, discuss about uh, some of the uh, uh, in my experience uh, some of the most relevant programs mm-hmm. for at least related to canadian migration uh, for africans so what i have seen is yes you're right they have the skills they have the expertise they lack sometimes when they are about to make the decision they lack points because of the age and that is where we come in and that is where most of our clients are very satisfied in terms of our programs in entrepreneur i have seen africans are really smart people yes they are very smart they do understand the pros and cons just like i would say you know south asians are i find i i personally feel south asians are really smart very smart and yeah. so are africans like the, when they make a decision it's an informed decision they understand the program to an extent wherein they know that you know okay this is what is going to happen mm-hmm. and they are one of those clients which are not going to trouble me to, throughout the process okay. not every single day they want an update they understand yeah. that it's a time taking process right. and that's why i like to work with them i really now have a very good uh, repo with all my african clients wherein i know they know i'm working on it and yeah. i'm actually working on it so Uh, in terms of their canadian programs mm-hmm. i think few of the very uh, options that i always give them is they are lacking express entry points which is the federal skill worker program if they are lacking those points then we help them arrange the entrepreneurial lmia through which we get them the boost of 50 to 200 points in their crs depending on their profile and everything we have the businesses for them mm-hmm. and upon you know once their business has been established and everything we do the knock double o or not single well am i here for them whatever their profile may be so that hike of crs mm. sometimes leads to direct pr sometimes leads to a work permit but that whole process and transition i have seen africans have been really interested in that because they are losing point on to age mm. they have every other thing they tick mark every other thing the only thing they lack is the age but which with help of which through lmia the labor market impact assessment they are able to get that crs as well as they are able to go and fulfill their canadian dream to be honest i think you hit the nail on the head there because a lot of people they don't even know that this exists yeah so a lot of them would just be like okay i'm already you would talk to them sometimes and they would be like oh i'm already past the age hmm. So what is it? Yeah. I'm already yeah. done. I have no other. That, you know, after a certain age, I can't yes, do anything. Yes, I can't do it. It's this, done. It's so done. they don't even know that this exists. That there is a way out for them to yeah. be able to still access the direct PR because yeah. 
they can either access, as you said, the direct PR or the work permit. Mm. So, but they don't even know that this exists. So I've spoken to so many whereby I have to change their minds and be like, no, you can still go to Canada. Mm. That is still your dream. You can yeah. still go. Yeah. There is a way out for you through yeah. this entrepreneurial LMIA yeah. uh, program. So, I mean, it's just, I think the lack of awareness too is a big factor yeah. as well. Yeah. So apart from the other things we've mentioned, the lack of awareness too, I think is a main thing because they are also given a lot of misinformation. Yeah. Sometimes they give them half information. So it's half and half and, you know, take all their money. They go sell all their lands, properties. Still at the end of the day, they don't get anything. Yeah. So I think if they come, if we come with the right information in place and these people are willing to be able to migrate with themselves, their mm -hmm. families, I think, that, like I said before, it's a perfect match yeah. with a perfect solution there. Yeah. So many of uh, them, I, uh, I like to add here that so many of them, you know, have uh, here in UAE, they have company established. I have uh, Africans who have companies in Saudi, in UAE, in Oman, in so Gulf countries, they have. And those companies, believe me, they're a very good fit for intra-company transfer program also. So, so many times I, I'm like, okay, you didn't even know about ICD, but this is a very valid thing keeping in, key. when I look at their company documentation, I'm like, this is a very valid solution that you have wherein you can go on a work permit and later convert it to PR because initially some people just want to go and see if their business really works there or not yeah. just want to open a subsidiary of their parent company and they want to see and the main thing in, in, which they cannot do from Nigeria or any other countries like uh, you know the African West African countries mm -hmm. especially is the licensing in the corporate documentation yes. which in UAE is very strong so that established UAE company can have a very easily available branch in Canada through which the owner of the company can transfer. So these programs, I think th these kind of sensitive information, mm -hmm. these kind of offbeat, this thing, they, are, they just feel that, okay, Canada, if the family is not sponsoring, yes. there is no sponsorship, nothing. And believe me, family sponsorships don't work except two or three provinces. They don't work at all. There's a very common myth that I wanted to highlight through your podcast, yes. through our podcast today, is that don't be in any false kind of uh, world. You should know that what options are actually going to work for you, what options are not going to work for you. For example, family sponsorships is not going to work for everybody. Spousal sponsorship is not going to work for everybody. So there are certain things, sound decisions without wasting time which people should take. Yeah. And I always say that timely decision is the right decision. There is no decision which is right or wrong. The time of the decision is the right or wrong decision. Absolutely. And the, and the thing like we mentioned earlier, which is, you know, why are these people actually looking for this? What's the reason why they're actually looking to migrate? What are the problems that they're facing? Like we try to look at it from the positive, which is these individuals are looking for a better life. These individuals are looking for better prospects for themselves and their families in terms of work, better situation, you know, better healthcare system, better education. And one more thing is an eventual citizenship. Because mm -hmm. ultimately, people are looking for a place whereby they can hold a dual nationality that is strong. Yeah. Very strong citizenship, yeah. very strong legal uh, passport. Passport is a passport. very important thing. Yes. I, I was coming on to that is that, for example, Canada is only giving residency right now. And then when, there are things, right? When you complete three years out of five years, you can apply for citizenship. But so many people are not able to do that. And I understand there they have certain things which are holding them back. So they're not able to complete their residency. And simultaneously, they also want a strong passport. So this is where most of the... Uh, clients from Africa they do have a very high demand for citizenship by investment program and Chinway you specialize in that so I want you to highlight some of the very lucrative programs and very cost-effective solutions for these people absolutely so the thing about the citizenship by investment programs is it's straightforward I think people always get a little bit bamboozled by the name citizenship huh. by investment so they get scared what is this maybe it's too technical for me maybe it's not even for me but I think anyone who has a clean record and has sufficient funds to be able to uh, acquire the second passport can do the program there is no test to be written there are no interviews uh, there is no need to give you know I have this managerial experience this long CV work experience no yeah. need for anything yeah. like that nothing yeah. of that sort so it's very straightforward if he has a very clean record 
very spotless, he actually has uh, a way to qualify for the program. And then of course, secondly, he's being able to meet the funding requirements. Yeah. So we have several countries in the Caribbean island that offer straight away direct citizenship by investment programs. Mm -hmm. So we have five of them, Dominica, Grenada, we have St. Lucia, we have Antigua and Barbuda. So we have all of these countries available for clients to actually take advantage of. So if they have at least 100,000 US dollars, they will be able to meet the donation amount. If they have at least 200,000 US dollars, they will be able to meet the investment amount into real estate. And through the real estate investment, they'll be able to get the citizenship. So it's very, very straightforward. And with that, they're holding a stronger legal passport that will be able to access several countries, over 130 countries in the world. So they're looking at the whole of the EU. They're looking at countries like Hong Kong, Singapore, China, etc. So all of these countries are available for them to access. You know, they can wake up and say, you know what, I have to be in the UK and just because you've got uh, a passport yeah. from Dominica or a passport from St. Kitts and Nevis or a Grenada passport, you can just go to the UK. Go there without, oh, I need to go and keep my passport at the embassy. Oh, I need to wait. And then the visa stamping comes. And then maybe it doesn't come. Maybe you get rejected or refused for one flimsy reason or the other. <laughs> so it knocks out a yeah, lot of this sure. hassles uh, for the clients. So I think for those ones who are just looking for straight away passport and they don't want to, let's say, uh, fulfill residency requirements, physical residency requirements, then this will be the best solution for them. So we've got uh, instances where some of our clients send their families to Canada, but for them as maybe uh, businessmen, yeah. they're looking for something quick where they are able to just travel freely, expand their businesses, seek out new business opportunities and investment opportunities as well abroad. So they just take up the second citizenship, yeah. the second passports, and they're able to do that. Whereas, you know, they have their spouse, children in Canada, children are going to school, free mm -hmm. education, all of that, and they're accessing all of the Yeah, uh, I mean, it's a very tailored solution that we uh, tend to give our clients, wherein the, the uh, male of the family has a different, uh, uh, you know, he has a different outlook of what he wants at the moment, and they want to settle their families in Canada. So it can be a very, I would say, a very tailored approach that very, we can take. For me, human tendency is also the same when it comes to global, it's a family decision. Right? It's a very family decision, but also at the same time, the human brain works in a way that they want everything fast yes everything very quick you know you know what I mean right so when they want everything fast then my suggestion and they, they're okay with direct passports and everything then my suggestion is honestly CBI because Canada has its own backlog has its own wait time and I'm not shying away from that tomorrow today or tomorrow your work will be done but it will take time yes. and that ta government time is not in my hands mm -hmm. because I can only do my part of the work but at the end of the day it depends on the government itself the system itself because I cannot work outside the system I am not the system so I need you to highlight the timeline for the CBI programs so that's another wonderful thing about the CBI programs is actually taking four to six months so we've even yeah. got instances where clients have received theirs within three months yeah so of yeah. course we always tend to, to the yeah we were yes. able to hand over the passport in three months exactly just three months that's it yeah. so it takes just an average timeline of four to six months for you know we're looking at anywhere from three months some people get it four months some people get it five months six months is mostly maximum and that might be due to any kind of varying factors maybe coming from the client side or delays coming from the authorities but typically it does not extend beyond that. Yeah. Just on a normal day, it doesn't extend beyond that. So I think that, you know, when you compare both programs, the Canadian uh, programs does fulfill its own uh, requirements for mm -hmm. several clients. And then of course the CBI fulfills other requirements for other clients as well. People who are looking for something really fast, who are looking to be able to get the passports and just up and go travel where they want to go to maybe they have many business engagements in asia they have many business engagements in in europe and again they do not want the hassle of always submitting passports looking for visas 
you know, being running the risk of even getting denied or rejected. They do not want any of that at all. So I think that's where a lot of them choose the CBI route, the citizenship by investment route. Whereas for those who are looking more into relocation, looking more into a long-term plan for their families, where they're going to be able to access all these different economic opportunities, mm -hmm. then they get towards Canada. And of course, eventually knowing fully well that they're going to get citizenship yeah. in Canada. Yeah. So to each one their own yes, journey again, but journey. for each I always say that it's very circumstantial. For me like UAE has been, a, after Canada, UAE has been one of my favorite countries and I'm very happy to be here honestly. Which brings me to the last part of our podcast today in which we are just gonna touch base about how UAE has evolved over time. And I personally have seen this in my in my own life. I have experienced that UAE has been a very business friendly and a very nice country to work in. And also the problem earlier with UAE was about the residency visas, which was a very big, uh, you know, which is still a very big myth in people's mind that no, you know, you can't stay in UAE. There has to it has to be linked to the company. It has to be linked to the job or anything. However, now there are new visa categories agrees which the UAE is open for the world mm -hmm. and that is why people from all over the globe are able to come here they're able to do business here they are opening companies here mm -hmm. they are making UAE their base and that is for so many good reasons that UAE has and it's um, I, I can go on and on about UAE but you have if you in your experience mm -hmm. can share with us and touch base with us about the company formation process um, which is related to mainland and free trade zones both so if we can just and plus the golden visa. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So right now in the UAE, there are so many opportunities to get residency visa, a proper UAE residency visa, whether it's through one of the golden visa routes or through company or through, let's say, the old way of going through employment uh, or being a student. So all of these ways are open. So company formation is one part that really interests me because I've had years of experience opening companies in different jurisdictions within the UAE for our clients, whether it be just a very simple license, simple business activity to even more complex, more yeah. complicated, highly regulated uh, business activities. So we have the experience, we have the capacity and the capability in-house to actually uh, facilitate that for our clients. So we have different jurisdictions. The main ones are the mainland, the free trade zone and the offshore. So I would just say, just to distinguish between the three, because a lot of people get confused where they should go and open their business to be able to get a visa. If a residency visa is one of the main aims for which you want to operate your business, then the offshore is already out of it. So that already gives us one distinction between the three mm -hmm. in that a mainland license and a free zone license can grant you uh, a visa or you will be eligible for a visa having those two alike. Offshore company would not grant you that. And another uh, main difference is that with a mainland and a free zone company, one of them, so the mainland, you're able to transact your business, you know, within the UAE, B2C kind of a business structure yeah. within the UAE. But a free zone will only allow you to conduct your business operations within that said free zone where you've gotten the license from. Yeah. And of course, with the offshore, you absolutely cannot conduct business within the UAE. You have to conduct your business outside. outside. So I think with these two main distinctions, there are so many other ways to differentiate, but these are the two main. So of course, someone who is coming for the residency visa in mind, the offshore is already striped out. That's typically for our clients who are just wanting quick company formation. They want to be able to transact business, open their offshore accounts and do their business with their international mm -hmm. clients. Yeah. We do that for them. But the ones who are looking more for something whereby they can also relocate them, not just them, but also their families and even domestic help, mm -hmm. then they should be looking in within mainland and free zone where there are variety of business activities yeah. to choose from. So yeah, having touched upon all the topics and having said everything that we could and give an overview, give an overview of all the programs that right now we can help people with uh, and especially when it comes to global mobility, which I believe should be a basic right for everybody. And with that belief, we are going to come to an end to today's podcast. 
tomorrow or day after tomorrow we are going to shoot another podcast which is going to be much more detailed specifically dealing with company formation in ui and uh, it's it's one of the most uh, asked for topic also and i get them a lot on my dms that how to become an entrepreneur in dubai and how to have my startup move to ui so it's a very common topic and uh, in that video we are going to touch upon those topics of course me and chinmay are going to highlight some of the key points when you are moving your business to ui or opening a new business so stay tuned and if you have any question query concern put in the comment section we are going to as much as possible we are going to try and answer that and on this podcast only you will hear many experts talking about different different uh, uh, programs and different different uh, topics which might be of your interest so thank you for watching and thanks chinmay